Welcome to part two of the Wicked Jack 55 assembly video. We're going to first begin by installing our landing gear. We want to get a ruler, a hobby knife, and our landing gear. And from our fiberglass hardware bag, our vertical landing gear supports, there should be two of these. Our horizontal landing gear supports, they're the round O-shaped ones, there should be two of these as well. Pause the video so you can measure and mark both the right and left side of the plane for the supports as shown. Let's go ahead and install the vertical support on one side. We're just going to install the one side for now. Next we're going to install both the right side and the left side horizontal supports. Install on this side and then go ahead and install on the other side as well. Now that we have uh, the two horizontals glued on and then the one side of the vertical, we're going to go ahead and cut out the in interior of the U-shaped vertical slot as shown here. That'll give us a alignment for our other piece. We'll go ahead and glue that on now. Right there. Next thing we're going to want to do is cut down our landing gear. And we're going to go ahead and cut it to seven and a quarter inches um, in the axle. Uh, the best way to cut this, I set it up on a block and then to roll your knife over it uh, to cut. This gives you a good clean cut. And you could also use a Dremel. You want to make sure not to breathe in the dust though. It's be bad for you. Um, just roll the knife lightly. And it should cut clean through. The Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and sand the tips of these to a point. This will help penetrate into the bone. Another thing you could do, and I recommend doing, is actually in your horizontal supports, um, run a knife and you know through the circular part. Just run your hobby knife in there and run a slice in it. That will make it so these are easier to push in as well. Now we'll go ahead and glue these in. I'm just sliding them through the vertical support hole and down into the uh, horizontal support. I'm going to press it down in about uh, four or five millimeters. Uh, this is two layers thick here on the EPO, so you have plenty of room for that. for the other side. Sorry. Next we're going to glue in the landing gear into our vertical support. I'm kind of off camera here but what I'm doing is um, pushing glue into it where the uh, landing gear intersects and just kind of filling up that void on both sides. I'll just take my finger and kind of press it in there, make sure I fill it in real good. Wipe off any excess. Now I'm going to go ahead and straighten out my landing gear. And we will go ahead and flip it over and we're going to make sure that we are level. Uh, while the glue's still wet, we do have some adjustment. We can pull the gear in and out. Um, you can eyeball it or if you have a level handy, you can throw a level on it, uh, assuming your bench is perfectly level. Good 
there. This is a still shot of what your landing gear should now look like. Next we're going to get our EPP pieces and we're going to take out the uh, wheel fairings. Uh, you can just snap them out like this or you can use your, your hobby knife. Now we'll take out the uh, leg fairing. trim these to fit and just put it up against the fuselage tight there and I'm just going to use my scissors and snip it and it looks like I cut a little short that should be okay that'll be hidden by the, uh, the wheel fairings and take your glue and we're just going to run a bead of glue down the center. Uh, you can measure and mark this if you prefer. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Go ahead and install the wheel fairings. I'll kind of position it where I would like. You want to make sure they're, uh, that they're high enough so you'll have some clearance. Just take a little bit of glue and be careful not to get this on the wheel. You want to also notice, uh, make sure that the hub is pointing correctly as shown here. Should be like an upside down T. We're going to go ahead and install our tail skid. We want to get the uh, the carbon strip that's shown here. It's the, your five millimeter strip, about roughly three inches long. One thing I like to do as well for durability is get a little bit of our blend derm tape, maybe an inch and a half, two inches. And then we will kind of wrap it around. And press it down real good.
Next we're going to install our aileron servo and linkage. We'll need our hobby knife, our aileron servo, our control horns, we'll need two of these, and our extended aileron servo arm, our two push rods, these are the two shorter rods in the hardware pack, and our push rod hardware kit. Go ahead and trial fit our control horns. May need to run a hobby blade down in there to clean it up. So good, we'll go ahead and glue them in. Want to put a good amount of glue on both sides of the tab here. and along the back edge. want to make sure our holes are aligned with the center of the hinge when the aileron is level with the wing. Now let's go ahead and get our aileron servo. I'm going to use our servo cross arm. We're going to use the aileron servo installation screws to uh, screw our extended servo arm on. Let's go ahead and fit that up. And you can see mine is not setting flush onto the control horn because of a little ridge that goes around the screw right here. I'm going to go ahead and send that down flat. That looks good there. I'm going to go ahead and ream the holes out where this is going to screw in a little bit. Uh, that way we're not going to uh, crack the servo arm when we thread our screw in. I'll go ahead and just pre-thread these in a little bit. Now we can go ahead and um, back them back out. We're going to install the extended servo arm as shown here. I want to go ahead and clip off the excess screws. So we should look like this. I'm also going to go ahead and clip off the extra two unused arms. I'm going to install the aileron servo. It will install in this direction. You'll see when we try to fit the servo that it's kind of hard to fit in there with the uh, stiff EPO. Um, sometimes I'll install the servo before installing the bottom fuselage, but what I really like to do actually is just cut out a square like this, and we can later glue that back in. This will give us plenty of room to get the servo slid in there and glued down. This is how the servo will fit. Um, note how I'm routing the wire back to the bottom of the fuselage where we'll install it into our uh, receiver. and 
glue this in. I, I prefer to use hot glue for installing the servos. That way I can heat up a hobby knife and easily remove it if I need to. And notice how my servo wire is running. I'm also going to go ahead and run a little bead of glue on the sides of the servo. I'm going to go ahead and center my servo. Um, you can use a servo tester as I'm doing here, or you can temporarily hook up your radio to center it. I'm going to go ahead and screw in the servo arm. You want the servo arm to be parallel with the lead edge of the wing as you see here. Let's go ahead and set the plate aside for now. We're going to go ahead and do our push rods. our push rod hardware kit. I'm going to go ahead and get our shrink tube. You'll have one long piece of shrink tube. I'm going to want to cut the shrink tube into four pieces. Um, they should be about roughly three quarters of an inch in length. Now we're going to go ahead and sand the end of one of our aileron push rods. Uh, this will give it a rough surface for the glue to adhere to. And we're also going to do the same for the Z-Bend. We are going to get one of our pieces of shrink tubing, slide it over the push rod, put our Z-band on. I'm going to drop a few drops of CA. And slide our shrink tube back over. And we're going to take our heat gun, or you can use a um, cigarette lighter, and shrink the tube on there. And we'll go ahead and do our second rod should have two now complete. Next I want to thread my four screws into the four nylon clevises. I want to thread them straight down, being careful not to cross thread it and damage the clevis. Go ahead and complete the other three in the same fashion. While we're at it, we're going to go ahead and do the Z-bands on our uh, rudder and elevator push rod as well. So now you should have all Z-bands installed, as you see here. Now I'll straighten out my 90 degree bends with my small needle nose pliers.
Now I want to back out the screws in the clevis so that it can slide onto our push rod. We we'll want to slide the clevises on the two aileron push rods. Uh, we won't need to install them on the elevator and rudder push rods yet. Now we'll install the Z-band push rod into the control horn. We'll want to install it into the center hole on the control arm. You'll want to make sure that the push rod isn't too long. Uh, there should be an eighth to quarter inch gap between the push rod and the control horn. If it's too close, you'll want to trim it down. Looks like we might be okay here. So I'm going to go ahead and clip on the clevis through the large hole in the control horn. And we can adjust it by just sliding the clevis up and down. We want to make sure that the aileron sets level with the wing. So want to make sure that while we're doing this that our servo doesn't uh, move. We want to make sure that the uh, extended servo arm still sits parallel with the wing lead edge. You can go ahead and snug down the screw on this clevis since we're adjusted correctly. You do not want to over tighten this. You can damage the clevis. Um, just snug it down slightly. Uh, you can pull it to test to make sure you've got a good secure hold on it. It doesn't take much. Now we'll go ahead and repeat these steps for the other side. Next we are going to glue and install the uh, small foam piece that we had cut out previously uh, around the aileron servo. I'll use a permanent black marker to touch up any areas that may have been chipped or scratched. I'm going to go ahead and run a bead of hot glue along the two sides of my control horns. This isn't required. I like to do this just for a little added strength. 